Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online, or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. With regards to network sharing in 5G, there are a number of approaches to this. And here we can see six of those. In relation to those, we can have specific grouping, so we can have a passive approach where we're sharing sites or backhaul. We can also have an active approach where we've got multi operators at the radio access network level. We can have multi operators at the core network level and we can also share that core network. In relation to 3GPP, it's really the multi operator core network that's currently been approached and standardized. So in relation to this, we, here we've got a scenario, we've got multiple operators and we're utilizing a shared radio access network. We'll see broadcast system information being transmitted, which will be received by the devices and contained in there will be PLMN identities and appropriate parameters such as cell identities and also tracking area identities as well. The PLMN identity list will be generated by the AMF and that will be passed to the devices in the form of the equivalent PLMN identity list and we'll also see a prioritised list being passed to the G node Bs as well. In addition, the devices will utilise that PLMN identity list in order to select the appropriate 5G core operator and it will use that in, or, in order to select the appropriate cell and also during cell reselection, so in idle, idle mobility. And one point to highlight is we will not change to a different PLMN as long as the current one is available in the location. In relation to mobility, we'll see the target PLMN being based on the prioritised list. We'll have the XN handovers utilising the target cell identity, so the source GNOB will communicate with the target GNOB across that interface and utilise the appropriate cell ID in order to do that. In relation to N2 handovers, it's the PL PLMN identity that's used, which is part of the tracking area identity. So in this scenario, we're seeing our device move from one operator to another. And we'll see, obviously, this being coordinated by the appropriate AMF. And that will communicate with the target AMF, which will then communicate with the target GNOB. Need to know more? Why not visit our store, where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.